told us on Jesus when he died on the cross. Power go die and power to go. Let the master set you free. Let the master bring his peace to you. You have got to make this your foundation. How Jesus loved on the cross. Again, to Jesus, this answer ministry broadcast. I'm Pastor Russell Scales, and I, I tell you, have you been getting blessed? I pray that the Lord is is opening up to you uh, that what Jesus done accomplished for us. And um, and I, I want I want to bring you some more revelation of living in Jesus' peace. Jesus said in in John 14 verse 27. Listen carefully today. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Jesus is going to have to help us to live this. And he's going to have to show us how uh, to, to, to constantly trust that, that his love never fails us. And what he did on the cross through his blood, he's our peace. He's our acquittal. He's our, our righteousness. The Lord Jesus is. And so there has to be a constant trust and reliance on him every day. Now, um, go to uh, Hebrews 12, verse 14. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. And so when you follow peace with all men, you always following the new commandment. Uh, this is my commandment, Jesus said, that you love one another as I have loved you. Now, to live this commandment, you can't do this. You and I cannot love each other. You're going to be in the flesh. What I mean in the flesh, as soon as they do something wrong, then what you was walking in don't work no more. But if you will live and believe in how Jesus loved 1 John 3, 23, you will believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and then love one another as he gave his commandment. If you will put faith in how Jesus loved, just for instance, for instance, you're, you're going along in your regular Christian walk, <clears throat> and somebody do you wrong. Your, your first obedience is to go believe how Jesus loved you while you were guilty. When you believe how Jesus loved you, that will constrain you because you are judging how Jesus died for everybody and what he did for them while they were guilty. Once you believe in that, saints, just take your quick picture of it then that, that believing in that should melt you and constrain you to live his forgiveness, his love that you believe in toward others. Should do that. But when, when you don't live a life of believing on the name of the son, believing on the love and the authority of the son, the character and the authority of Jesus, then you can stay mad, stay upset. Say something you ain't got no business and never get back in faith uh, uh, to receive that, that Jesus has forgiven you of that and not walk in the light of it. Um, so <clears throat> listen carefully because I've, I've seen this ditch and it's a ditch. Um, you, when you follow peace, you are always following Jesus giving you, giving you giving you, giving you his love to love others, giving you his forgiveness to forgive others, and then holiness, which is being sanctified. And all this is, is holiness, is Jesus setting you apart. Listen carefully at this. When you're, when you're sanctified, Jesus, by the Holy Spirit, is telling you what to do every day, telling you how to live every day. That's holiness. Um, telling you to put your basket back up when you, and, 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 and don't just leave it there in the parking lot like heathens do. Uh, you know, we should care. And so, so when you're sanctified, the Holy Spirit, by the Lord Jesus, 
is telling you what to do. He's telling you what to do. He's leading. He's guiding you what to say, how to think, uh, what to live, how to act toward one another. Because we don't know unless he teaches us. Then we can walk in the light. Without which no man shall see the Lord. And what, in the Greek, you're not going to see the Lord right now. When you're living in condemnation, living in guilt, <clears throat> uh, you're living in how you feel, um, uh, you're living in want, wanting to be special, wanting to be important. See, God God loved us in Jesus and made us righteous. There's, there's nothing for you and I to try to be. It's just something you and I are to live in who he is and who he's made us, what he's done for us, how he loved us, how he forgave us. That's what the Lord wants from us, is to live by Jesus, live by faith, live by who Jesus is and what Jesus did for us. This is, I'm telling you, you know, there's so many people in churches getting divorced. Uh, I, I, I heard lately 54% of Christians get divorced to get married. That's, that's ridiculous. <clears throat> and, and, um, and a lot of these pastors don't, don't know why. It brings strife in the church, you know. <clears throat> you know, this husband, this wife get the boy, they got kids. They go to the same church, then, then they meet somebody else, they get married, and, and, and I'm telling y'all, that stuff is a mess. I won't tolerate it, Jesus as a church. Uh, and, and, and I don't mind people coming. Um, with whatever shake you in. <clears throat> but once I get through teaching you, you will find out how to get everything in your life turned around. You, you will, you'll find out how to be forgiven. Forgiven. And a lot of times in, in, in Jesus' teachings, in red words, if you don't bring the cross and, 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 and our redemption and how he loved us and how he forgave us, to these verses, you, they will condemn you because they were under the law of Moses. Now, let me give you a good example. Uh, because what I'm teaching in this series, Not Let Your Heart Be Troubled, is, is so you can see the Lord when you fall in his peace of him giving you all the time, showing you what to do. And you are uh, holy, you live in holy in doing, letting Jesus teach you his ways of doing it, being right, his ways of walking in, in holiness and, and pleasing God. Jesus has shown us how to do it. Without Jesus, you, you're not going to do it. Even, even though you're born again, even though you've accepted Christ, even though you've received him, he still got to teach you how to live this every day. We have to behold in the word of God the glory of the Lord. We have to behold Jesus. So that same presence that was on Jesus can transform us <clears throat> to live the same in the In our spirit, we are already born of the same nature that's in Jesus. But we ain't, we ain't, that don't mean we live it all that out. Only Jesus lived all of it out perfect. We have to let him teach us how to do that too because he let the father teach him as a man. Now, here, boy, I'm itching to get to this. In Mark chapter 11, I've, I've heard people, you know, that in, in Christ and, uh, uh, you know, they, they, they just hate some of Jesus' teachings. But the Lord Jesus done taught me how to teach it under the blood. Under the blood. Well, what do you mean, Pascal? Well, <clears throat> for instance, in, in Matthew 19, Matthew 19. Listen to this, Kevin. I'll teach this first. Uh, uh, Jesus talked about divorce. Now, they asked Jesus, said unto him in verse 7, Why did Moses then command uh, uh, to give a writing of divorce to put her away? Because Jesus told him, Well, God joined together, let no man put a son. Well, who's right? Moses or Jesus? That, that, that's, listen, both of them, both of them right. But, but Jesus said something. No, no. 
Paul said that if in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, that if, if you have an unbelieving spouse who is not pleased to dwell with you, I, I'm telling you, if they smoking dope all the time, spending all the money, uh, just abusive, dogging, um, and I'm not talking about problems. I'm not talking about a hurt. I'm not talking about that. And they're not pleased to dwell with you. They might have some problems, but they're still pleased to dwell with you. The Bible tells you don't depart. But if they're not said, let, let them go. And But he tells two born-again, spirit-filled believers that he told them not to divorce. So who's right? Is, is Paul contradicting Jesus? No. L listen carefully now. Jesus came back and told him in Matthew 19, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. And Jesus said, I say unto you, now listen carefully now. Because people are saying, well, this, this is not for the day. Um, Jesus was talking to the Pharisees, answering a question about the law of Moses. We're not under this, but we better learn from it because you could come back under this. Whoever shall put away his wife except for fornication and shall marry another committed adultery and who so married her which is put away committed adultery. Now, here's my question to you. Is this the truth? Why, of course it's the truth. If you put away your wife, Except for fornicate, or you put away your husband. The Bible says you committed adultery if you marry again. Now, under the law of Moses, there was no forgiveness. So if somebody received forgiveness through the blood of Jesus, he can't remember that no more. And don't tell me Jesus didn't forgive this. And see, so if you don't go, the Pharisees came tempting Jesus in verse 3, trying to, and so Jesus answered their question. And so you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 7, Jesus tells Christians not to get no divorce. Even if you separate, just, just stay, just stay unmarried until you come back together. Now that's, that's born again believers. That's not sinners. And, um, and so we, we need, Jesus said what God joined together, let no man put asunder. Amen. And when God joins something together, you ain't got no business trying to break it. And, and some people don't even realize, you know, they wasn't even, they wasn't even walking it with God and walking in fellowship with God. And he wasn't even at their way in no way. Praise God. He did it. Praise the Lord. Now, 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 now listen carefully at this, what I'm going to teach y'all. What's missing in Matthew 19 is Jesus' forgiveness. But people today, a lot of people, that's why the second one don't work, the third one don't work, the fourth. I know people been met five, six times. They ain't going to never work because there's, there's no Jesus in them. No Jesus. And um, a lot of times people looking for love, looking for people. But really, a true marriage that, 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 that I have, that God has grown us to, is a, a marriage that's, that's believing in Jesus' love and looking to give Jesus' love every day. You're not looking at what they can do for you. You're looking at what you can do for them. And if each other is living in Jesus' love and you just keep running in that every day, you'll keep forgiving, you'll keep forgetting, you'll keep being kind, you'll keep covering, and, and you'll keep being a blessing. And you'll defeat the devil. That's how Jesus defeated the devil on the cross and God spoiled him and made, and, and, and made a show of him open and triumphing over him in it, the cross. And so we have to pick up our cross and live and believe in how Jesus loved us so we can go live our cross toward one another and giving, giving Jesus love every day. And so if, if, you, if you've been divorced and remarried, if you're not forgiven and you haven't received Jesus' blood for that divorce, you're in adultery. But if you've been forgiven, God can't remember that no more. Therefore, you can't be in adultery. Amen. Hallelujah. 
And so when, when people don't get revelation, they, they, they'll try to throw Jesus' teachings away, but you can't throw them away. Now here in Mark, oh, this is a biggie here for the in Christ people. In, 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 in uh, Mark 11, 24, Jesus said, therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire. Well, if God done did it all, and he has, that through Jesus' blood, we've been forgiven of everything. God's already supplied all our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ. Now, he's already provided healing for, but you still have to come and believe and receive. Well, when you need to come and believe and receive, you're forgiven. When you have to come and believe and receive that you were healed by stripes. None of this stuff just worked for you because the Lord done it. And so Jesus said, believe that you receive and you shall have. So when I come short in something and, and, and I'm feeling remorse about that, uh, I, I just say, Lord, you, you forgive me. I'm sorry I missed it. And, and I, I turn to go the other way. And I just I just walk on like ain't nothing wrong. I never dwell on sin. I never let the devil bring thoughts to me to keep me dwelling on sin. Because I know I'm forgiven. And I know that I got to walk in that forgiveness. Now, this is going to be good here. Listen carefully. Jesus said, and, and is a conjunction. He's not through with verse uh, 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 22, 23, and 24. He's not through. He says, and conjunction. And when you stand praying, forgive. Forgive. Now, now, now listen carefully at this teaching. Jesus done forgave us of everything. He's done even forgave the person that do you wrong. But you know what's missing in that? You ain't forgave everybody. I remember years ago, Jesus put this revelation in me. And I pray he'll put it in you today. And Jesus said to me, forgive your wife. This was at night in the afternoon. Forgive your wife. I said, Lord, she ain't done nothing wrong. See, this is where people miss it. She, she ain't done nothing wrong. And he said again, forgive your wife. I said, Lord, she ain't done nothing wrong. Forgive your wife. And so I, I said, Lord, I forgive her. Anytime the Lord tell you something three times, you might as well go and do it because you're not going to win. You don't have to understand. And so I said, Lord, I forgive her. Next morning, as soon as I wake up, the Lord said, forgive your wife. And I knew from last night I didn't win. I said, Lord, I forgive her. Late on that day, I, I said, uh, I asked her, did she mail that important letter I gave? I listen as she talked to me. This was, this was for the Lord changed my wife. She said, no, I forgot it. Now get over it. Ooh, and she added, and I told her how important it was for her to mail this. And, and, and then she told me to get over it. And she said it ugly. And so that didn't add to that, you know, to, to make me feel good. And so I, I, I felt the steam come up. I felt the anger come up. I, I felt the distress come up. Listen to me say, I felt the trouble come up. Trouble. It's trouble now. It ain't no peace. It wasn't no peace there. What'd you do? Listen, Jesus had just taught me last night and that morning to forgive her before she did anything. And so it rose up in me. You remember last night? I said, Lord, I forgave her. You remember this morning? I said, Lord, I forgave her already. And it was so easy to forgive her. Because Jesus had taught me that night to believe how he forgave and to go ahead. And he had already forgiven me of everything that I did wrong, that I do wrong, or I ever will do. He still forgave me. 
whether I walk in it or not, he's done forgave me. And so when I walk in it, I get to walk in the benefit and blessings of it. Now watch, watch carefully. Now listen to this. Some people preach, this ain't for the day. When you stand praying, forgive if you have ought against any, that your Father which is in heaven may forgive you. And Jesus said, but if you do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. And, and, and people say, oh, this ain't for the day. Oh, yes, it is. You just, the people who say this ain't for the day don't have revelation how to teach it with the blood. But Jesus done taught me. And what it is, if it is that is that if you're not going, you can receive forgiveness and say, Lord, I thank you. I'm forgiven of everything. But you can't live that forgiveness and you're not going to give it to others. And so if you don't forgive and, 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 and pick up your cross and follow Jesus to live in his love and, and forgiveness to forgive others, he's not going to let you enjoy how much of he's done forgave you. You won't enjoy it. You won't get to walk in it. And I, I don't understand. I don't understand people. Listen, I've had the Lord, uh, I've cut off the Lord blessing me because I, I had art against my wife. And, and I went and asked the Lord years ago in the early 90s, Lord, why this ain't working? He said, you've been upset at your wife the last three days. I said, oh. Just a little ick, a little leaven. Oh, I was smiling, but on the inside, you know, man, I didn't want to be bothered with her. I, 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 I kind of remembered how she did. And, and Jesus, I said, Lord, I forgive him. I'm so sorry. And he left and the blessings came. And um, and so you, you, it ain't that the Lord ain't going to forgive your trust. He's done forgave you of everything. You're not going to get to walk in it. You can't walk in the blessings of God through unbelief. You have to be believing how Jesus loved you on the cross, how Jesus forgave you on the cross. So, and then, then people say, God ain't going to forget. God already done forgave you of everything. That's preaching. Whoa. Well, to believe Jesus ain't already took all your sins away. And what we've got to tell people, and I'm preaching to you all, is that, that, that you're not going to walk in all these blessings of the blood to serve the living God. How do you serve the living God? When you believe and accept the one that God sent and what he did for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's forgiven you. God is not holding nothing against you. God, Pastor, what, what is my life for me? You're not believing in it. You won't receive that Jesus ain't holding nothing against you. You won't receive that toward others. He's done forgave them. They might not walk in it. They might treat me, be mean to you again. Forgive them again. How many times? As many times as is needed. Jesus taught me this. Listen carefully as I close today. He said, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Pray for those which despitefully use you and persecute you. Why, Pascal? Listen, so that the devil and their flesh cannot get you out of his love. He's not telling you to love their faults, love their sins, love that he didn't love ours. He's telling you to give them his love, do good to them, bless them with words uh, 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 of faith, and, 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 and pray for them with despite for you and persecute you so you they will not knock you out of his love for you. And what people do a lot of times is the devil comes against us and, and in marriages to, to knock out Jesus, you live in Jesus' love to others. And so if you read that verse in Matthew 5, 44, you will, find, you will see that Jesus don't deal with the person that done you wrong. He only deals with you and how you going to respond because you are living in his love for you. And so, so when, 
when you when he says you god won't forgive you is he's he's telling you that you're not gonna walk in what god did for you and when you don't walk in forgiveness when you don't receive eternal life uh to 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 make you born again it, it didn't do no good. God done all that on the cross, even though God did all that. So if God forgave everybody, it don't do no good if you're not going to forgive others. Every person from your heart, every person, God want us to live in his peace where well, ain't nothing wrong because we're living in Jesus' love and Jesus' blood. I want to make available to you this six CD series, Let Not Your Heart Be Troubled. On the screen is our address for a love gift of $30 or more. And if you ask me, I'll let I'll give you a free copy of my book, God's Grace Explained. Make your checks and money orders to Jesus is Answer Ministries or Robert Scales Ministries. Post Office Box 292-112, Nashville, Tennessee, 37229. And I tell you, say order these. You can go online to Robert Scales Ministries.org and you can order these online and use your credit card. I know there'll be a tremendous blessing to you. Uh, and, and I'm telling you, saints, uh, God is, is bringing the church out of this darkness, out of the law, out of uh, uh, trying to live right. God want us trusting in Christ and Jesus showing us how to do it. Amen. Amen. Well, I want to uh, 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 invite you all to Jesus as a church, a church that's alive, it's worth the drive and I'm telling you, saints, uh, there, there's a there's a maturity there, uh, a true worship there, where people are, are really taught and and to catch the spirit of worship, where uh, we 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 tap into the presence of God and minister to the Lord. And so y'all come. I know your service times on the screen, and I know you will be tremendously blessed uh, by the word. And the way that the Lord has taught me to pastor. Amen. I just don't put up with everything. Praise God. And we have no strife in the church. I know that's tough for some of y'all to believe. But people are not arguing and fussing with me. And they're not arguing and fussing with one another. They go through things. But boy, we come up out of them. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, I want to thank my friends and partners. Thank you so much for your financial support. Thank you for helping me. And, and saints, I, I'm telling y'all, God uses my friends and my partners. So thank you for helping me. You can go online to robscapeminister.org and donate through your credit card. Thank you so much for obeying God. Well, my prayer for you is that you will know the love of Christ that passes knowledge and be filled with all the fullness of God. For Jesus has some ministries. I'm Pastor Rob Scales. Remember, saints, as Christ loved you on the cross, Put all your faith in his love. Live it toward others. Have a blessed day. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Bye-bye.